Hi, I'm Lori, and I'm here to share with you my passion for nutritious food and sustainable living. Each week, I'll travel throughout the Lower Mainland to discover what goes into the creation of our local foods. We'll see if these foods meet my dietitian's stamp of approval and why these foods are not only good for you, but also good for our Earth. Hey everyone, welcome back to the show. Always a pleasure to see our next guest and she's brought some snacks to sort of uh, reinforce the message that she's getting across to viewers. Absolutely, you can see Lori Petrick right here on Shaw on Good For You, Good For Our Earth. How are you, Lori? I'm Hi, Lori. How are you? So tell us about the new segment, the new show. Yeah, so I mean, usually I would come in and talk all about the the food that um, I would like people to start consuming more of. Um, but yeah, talk is cheap. So we're taking the show on the road and we're actually going to be going out to the different producers that uh, are doing really neat, sustainable things on their farms or with the food that they're producing. So uh, yeah, it's going to be very This is a fascinating, uh, I don't want to call it a trend because it's not. I mean, it's something that's existed for ages. But to make that connection not only to what you're putting in your body, but how it's affecting sort of the web of life and the earth. Yeah, well. I mean, because there's a lot of food shows or food porn shows, we call them, that yeah. is all about just eating and consuming. Um, and you actually don't know still where that food's coming right. from. Right. Yeah. And so when I talk about, you know, buying quality food, because people like to eat, but they don't necessarily know if the food's good or not. And right. well, and people are becoming more and more interested in where their food is yeah. coming yeah, from. All beef wasn't created equal. That's right. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, exactly. And I mean, with the 100-mile diet, a lot of people were thinking that local food was about reducing your carbon footprint. Um, and it is somewhat, but really it's like 15% of your carbon footprint is reduced by eating local. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could eat local 24-7 and you're still not going to make that big a difference. Yeah. But what a lot of our local producers, or the ones that we're going to be showing on the show, are doing is they're doing way more than that. They're reducing water consumption, they're reducing energy consumption, they're reducing, you know, they're preserving their soil so yeah. we actually can grow food on that land, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. for our children. So they're doing way more for the environment other than just it being local. They just happen to be local. Yeah, well, let's go on a little bit of a road trip and yeah. tell us about where you went and what you found. So we're actually going to be shooting this uh, next week, but uh, I was out at another farm, Glorious Organics, yesterday and uh, stopped in and grabbed some of this. So this farmer, actually, this is a walnut wine, and so he <laughs> makes... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> out of walnut, it was so much was like, hmm, that'll be interesting. But the neat thing is that he um, actually uses the whole part of the walnut. So he makes the walnut wine, and then he also makes preserves out of it as well. So he uses kind of like the fibrous part of the walnut yeah. to be to make well, things and, like this. And I mean, in any yeah. winemaking process, there's the mash they call it, right? Which is exactly. sort of, and that would be the same. So he just uses yeah. it for preserves. Okay. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm can we crack this thing? Crack, crack it. Let's taste it. So this it. is a port style wine. I'm, I'm it is. Guessing yes. Port style wine, 17 percent, and uh, yeah, a little bit more than than usual. So that's. And you while he's opening that, uh, tell us about the other stuff that you found here. So this one here is a Turkish fig with the walnut wine. So it actually uses the walnut wine. This is the green walnut we're using the walnut um, and some of the wine so he actually has a vineyard as well <laughs> mm -hmm. and then he has walnut trees and so he combines all the stuff together he does import some of his ingredients right uh, but the whole purpose of it is he's organic but not certified organic and that's one of the things I really want to highlight on the show as well What is the difference there's um, if you're certified you actually have people that visit your farm and they do the checklist and making sure that you you meet all their qualifications if you're not certified you can meet all those qualifications you just haven't paid to have some the certification, and certification. Right. so it does increase the cost of your food if you're certified organic part of the reason for doing the show is is to get people familiar with those ones that aren't certified organic but they're doing all the good things right yeah. like this farmer actually has this big uh, tank that all the water, the extra water that we get here in Vancouver, he stores and then he runs it on a drip system through his field. <laughs> and so he doesn't use any extra water. And whereabouts is this yeah. farm? It's on Langley. Uh, it, the interesting aspect of this obviously is, is, you know, making that connection, but for people that are watching that might be producers as well, you know, the ideas that you get, yeah. because a lot of this is technology that existed before modernization. Yeah was forgotten about and then is sort of re-championed now. Yeah, we're actually going to a farm in a couple of weeks that is doing some techniques, um, and I'm not going to explain them all because they're, they're kind of weird and wonderful, but he basically imported that from Europe, and no one else wow. in the Lower Mainland is doing it. Really? But the way he does it, he uses no pesticides or herbicides. So I guess in the Lower Mainland, it's the soil is a bit acidic, and so, you know, you have to do, use some things that uh, the certified organic growers can't use. But he do, does all these other things. So it's neat because even though he's not certified organic, 
the production is very good and he does a lot of things that How are very exciting sustainable. has this been for you as a nutritionist to, to learn all these new things that are yeah. happening right in our backyard? It's, it's, I can't say how exciting it is because every time I'm out there and I'm doing a workshop or doing a one-on-one -on -one with someone, they always say, well, I was at the store and, you know, I didn't want to pay this much for that because, right. you know, the imported yeah. apple was just that much cheaper and they just can't see what's happening. We're so removed. Yeah. And the thing I love about this is that people can see Mm -hmm. where they're putting their money because you can spend your money you know um, on you know giving it away to a wildlife federation but when you actually buy food that's produced in a sustainable way you are doing so much for the environment and you're also reducing a lot of the junk mm -hmm. that you'd be yeah. getting in other foods I mean I've talked lots about artificial colors and flavors and all the stuff that they put in food to make you think it looks good mm -hmm. and is nutritious but it's not and so you pay a lot less but you're getting junk. Yeah. Now yeah, they had a nice close up of the wine, but we need to know how it tastes, Michael. Well, every time I take a sip, I can't hear anything because the angels keep singing hallelujah. <laughs> I thought you were going to say because it makes you deaf. Freaking believable. <laughs> this is, you have to try just a little bit after I know you're a little hesitant to drink on air because it's so beautiful. Uh, this is absolutely so, tremendous. So it's yeah. made out of walnut. It's made out of walnut. I've never had this before, and it's, uh, this is a guaranteed buy for me. Oh, and that's delicious. The, the wonderful thing about this is that a lot of people are talking about staycations this year yeah. and in the last couple of years, is that a lot of these farms are now have stores. So you can go out, you can take a tour of what's happening, and you can also buy the product right from the farmer. Yeah. So a lot of, I mean, this product you can also get at Granville Island. Mm -hmm. um, but if you As actually, well as these great preserves, these are delicious. Yeah, you can get yeah. them all at Granville Island, or you could, if you, if you want to go out to the farm with your family. And a lot, I mean, even yesterday when we were filming, uh, me and uh, my camera guy were walking along, we're just about to leave, and then we saw these little bunny rabbits. We're like, oh, little bunny rabbits. <laughs> yeah, you know, and I'm like, oh, great. <laughs> right. but there's, I'm working. <laughs> there's so much that, you know, you think, oh, what's on a farm? But even as an adult, I was yeah. like, is that rooster real? <laughs> well, and to make that connection for your children as well, especially yeah. if they're growing up in an urban environment where they're not seeing a lot of working farms and they're not seeing yeah. how things are produced, to make that connection, oh, wait, this is how I get what I'm eating right yeah. now, and this is yeah. where it comes from. And even when we were filming, like, the roosters are crowing, and, and it's like, don't they just always do that noise in the morning? Like, no, they do it all day. <laughs> city girl. <laughs> like, uh, okay, city you girl. can watch the Lori's new segment right tremendous. here on Shaw TV. It's called Good For You, Good For The Earth. I can tell Michael really likes the wine because he has not put it down. Lori's segment will begin airing on July the 20th. You made that feel so judgmental. <laughs> and it's really good. <laughs> We're going to take a break.